Thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. What a picture. Yes. That is the kind of program that you're going to need to stay with us. Don't move this channel. You will be blessed. And you'll probably, in parts of this interview, have your mouth hanging open. Because when I'm really amazed at something, I kind of sit with my mouth hanging open. <laughs> so, so the guy you're looking at is TNT Tucker. Great book. And listen to some of his stats as we watch. I was just telling you in the green room, keep that, keep that shot. Directors, they hate to stay on a shot more than a millisecond. Okay. So you got to ask him, please stay on the shot. Anyway, we were talking in the green room, and I'm looking at him. I mean, he has had every punch known to man hit him in the face, and he's clean. I mean, his face looks like a he looks like 20. Unbelievable. Now listen to this. My name is Tony TNT Tucker. I was a national AAU light heavyweight champion. I held the USBA heavyweight title. I was a two-time NABF heavyweight champion. I held the California State heavyweight title. I was a gold medalist at the Pan American Games and a gold medalist in the World Cup uh, at light heavyweight. Uh, probably most notably, I, was, I am a former IBF, listen to this, heavyweight world champion. And uh, here's some that would not box him. <laughs> Dave, you, you came off of TNT. Okay, thanks, Dave. <laughs> I'm just telling you what a director, if you ever go to a director, you'll understand what, what Dave does. Um, Michael Spinks, wouldn't box him. George Foreman, wouldn't box him. <laughs> uh, and uh, you boxed Mike, Mike Tag Tyson, right? Yes. If I can get my tongue straightened out. That's the shot that we <coughs> pulled from when, you, uh, when we opened the show. And Lennox Lewis? Yes, Lennox Lewis. Uh, tough guys? Tough guys. He held, this guy that you're looking at right there, a 58 to 7 record against top notch champions. And here's his testimony I am also a champion against crack cocaine addiction. He tells the story that no one wants to tell the story of drugs and addiction. What an honor to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and, you. And, <laughs> TNT, can you stand up with me? Okay. Can, hey, gotta, can you get a wide shot, Dave? <laughs> like, I mean, six foot five and a world champion, gold medalist. I wish you had those gold medals hanging around. They're not really gold, are they? They're not really gold, are they? I don't know. I never checked <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I read someplace they go, yeah. they gold. They call them gold medal because yeah. that's the color of them. Yeah. But what an honor to have you. Thank you. And this good-looking lady next to you, Joanne, yes. have a seat. Yeah. Believe me, I'm not going to mess with you. Yeah. All right. You are a preacher. I am. And you you have a church. Senior pastor, Embassy International Christian Center in Tampa. Florida. Now, how did you hook up with? this good-looking guy next to you. We met at Publix. <laughs> oh, come yeah. on, that's me. Can I say that? We met at, yeah, at the grocery store. Oh. He was holding up the line getting salmon, and I said, my goodness, would you please hurry up? <laughs> 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 he, was he was irritating me at the, at the, at the meat counter. Oh, you actually said that? Yes, he Thank was you. so dis yeah, it was yeah. yeah. Hey, Dave, can you get a shot on my ring here? Where, which camera should I go to? Over there? Okay. This, look at that. Well, it's an old man's hand if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Gee, I used to have a, I used to have a hand that was totally spotless. <laughs> and, and at 76, at 76, look what happens to your hands. But look at that ring. Is that as close as you can get it, Dave? It's really gorgeous. It's got boxing gloves on the front. You got this ring for what? I got that for being inducted into the Florida Boxing Hall of Fame. Wow. Neat, and it just happened, too. Mm, yeah, it just a couple weeks ago. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. How does this feel to be you? <laughs> How does it feel to be me? <laughs> uh, right now, it feels blessed. I feel yeah. blessed. Wow. Yeah, I feel real blessed that I was able to get through what I got through and still here, be here to talk about it. Now, you were 
born in uh, Michigan. Yes, Grand Rapids, Michigan. What what part? Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids. Yeah, let me let, me, let, let me tell you the funny part about that story here. Um, my, my dad was was my trainer because he was a he was a boxer. Yeah. And my dad trained Floyd Mayweather Sr., who in turn his son, Floyd Mayweather Jr., who was considered the best today boxer. Did, did you see that last fight he did? The Pacquiao? Yeah. Yes. 100 million? <laughs> he changed the game. They paid him 100 million dollars. <clears throat> what was the most you ever made at a heavyweight fight? Not a hundred million dollars. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, the Don King, the Don King is my promoter, though. See, the, the, the difference. Don King took most of the money, though, didn't he? It, 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 of course, he definitely. Is. <laughs> you know, that, that's that's the thing with, with Floyd Mayweather is that he promotes his own, he promotes himself. Wow. And Dale Hoyer showed him how to do that. You know, when he, when they fought together, he said, "Man, why we need a promoter? You know, I'm Dale Hoyer, you Floyd Mayweather." Everybody knows this, and if we, if we fight, they're going to come anyway. I wish Tyson would have figured that out. Mm. Yeah. Because he blew about $65 million, I read. Yeah. <clears throat> Be, you know, paying all the people that, that you have to pay. Yeah. Yes. I heard, I, heard he, I had heard he had paid $3,000 a week for towels. For what? Towels. In his house? Towels. Towels. No, yeah, you know, doing training. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he was 3000 a week. Yeah. He could that. buy the factory. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, you're six foot five. <clears throat> 80, uh, give me your reach. 82 inch reach. Oh, my goodness. 80, how do you buy shirts? Yeah. <laughs> you go in, you have them custom made? No, I don't know. They've got 82 inch shirts? I, I don't know. I, 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 you know, when you get older, you shrink, though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Trust Your hands get old yeah. and you shrink. <laughs> I, at one time in my life, I was 5'9", and now I go at about probably five, seven and a half or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's the reason I wear boots. They give me a little more height. Oh, they're yeah. beautiful boots, too. <laughs> yeah, right. Beautiful uh, <clears throat> Now, you, 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 uh, your parents separated. Mm -hmm. What did that do to you growing up? How did that affect you? Well, it, it, it didn't affect me like it would, would normal because I like I, I refused to be denied. So wherever my father was, I, I made sure he I was around. So now you he, he couldn't get he couldn't get rid of me. Now you, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Now, yeah. <clears throat> first time in the ring, everyone always goes back to that time they step in the ring. Mm -hmm. Did you know that you had it? Or did you think maybe this isn't for me? Well, uh, well, well let me let me go to the story. Okay, um, when, when I was younger, you know, my dad used to always have me come in, you know, in the uh, living room, in the living room. He had a bunch of his friends in the living room, showing you off. And, and he had me, you yeah. know, come to the room, and I'm throwing these yeah. different combinations yeah. and stuff like that. And I see his friends patting him on the back and how they made him happy, and he made me happy. You know, I was yeah. center of attention. Yeah, and. Um, you know, he always showed, showed me these things, but I never practiced it, you know. And so it's, it was, I was in um, school, and um, it was kindergarten, and this Mexican kid used to chase me home every single day. I was terrified of this kid, you know. And so I would run home every day. How, how tall were you at that time? I can't remember what how I was. So you weren't as tall as now? No, no, I wasn't okay. taller. Okay. No, I, 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 I was going to say, how could you be terrified of anybody? I was like five or six years yeah. old, you know. Okay. <laughs> so... So anyway, this guy used to, used to chase me home every day. My dad caught me, you know, running from this kid, and he said, if I, if I catch you running again, I'm going to whoop your tail, you know. I would still run from this guy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and this one particular day when we were running, and my brother was with my younger brother, and he caught my younger brother, and I was around the corner. And, I, and, it was, and this fear said, well, should I keep running or should I, or should, or should I go back? Because I was my brother. And I hit him, hit my brother's face, and it, and it just crushed me, you know. And I ran back, I was aiming, I ran back, and I pushed him down. And he fell back up on the snowbank like that, and I seen him just get He ran. I chased that fool home every single day. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, it was, buddy. It was, like, it was like recess when we got out of school, because I'd be right, 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 right. So, you, waiting. so you found your place. You, yeah, you yeah. knew that you could handle this. I, I, you, 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 uh, you, you transitioned from light heavyweight to heavyweight at 180 pounds. So you were getting in the ring with people that were outweighing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well actually, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't 180. When, when, when I, um, 
I'm just reading your stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 they don't always act, print yeah, right. Yeah, actually, what it, what it was, I was like about 190, 195. Okay. okay. You know, I, I never got above that. My my biggest was when I when I fought Tyson and when I fought um when, when I fought uh, Buster. Okay. You know, that's when I, I moved up to. You like beat Buster, 15. right? Yeah. And actually, Buster <coughs> beat Tyson. Yeah, I showed him how to do it. <laughs> now, now your, 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 your dad had a unique way of training you. He would bring balloons, right? Yeah, well, well, well actually, we, he, we, was, we was at this tournament, and he was showing me, you know, how, how, how you going to do it. And he brought this balloon. He was this big old guy, you know, that won these tournaments, you know, real strong, you know, muscle-built guy. And he, so, so, he, so he told the guy, he said, he said, let me see, I bet you can, you can really bring it. He said, yeah. You know, he says, how, how hard are you hitting? This guy just swinging the balloon, just, just go that way. He says, swing ah, the balloon, just go that way. And, he, and, and, and then so he told me, he said, see, see that guy? No, he couldn't bust his balloon. He said, that's the way you got to do with your punches. You got to roll with your punches. Just like the balloon does. Just like the balloon does. So, you know, so, so, so. Wow. so so the whole thing is, you fight these big guys and these, these terrible punchers, but you got to take some of the the sting off of it, so you roll with it. Mm -hmm. You could do yeah. one thousand. I hope this <coughs> stats right. If it's yeah. not, correct me. Yeah. One thousand push-ups a day. Did you get the? <laughs> did you get? The, I, I I mean, I've done as many as a yeah. hundred. And believe me, I didn't do a hundred the next day. <laughs> <laughs> but you're doing a thousand. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you you must have been as hard as a brick wall. Yeah, I mean, I, I was a heavyweight. You know, see, uh, one thing you have to understand is, is in heavyweights and lighter weights, as a heavyweight, wow. you have to be able to punch. So I had to build up my strength. Now you you uh, boxed in uh, on five thirty eighty seven outdoor arena in Las Vegas, at the Las Vegas Hilton, and you and Buster Douglas, James Douglas, mm -hmm. uh, you TKO'd round 10. Mm -hmm. Buster, what happened? Buster was a hell, hell of a fighter, you know, it, it was it's, it was now funny. He, he said, hell of a fighter. Oh, sorry. He just, <laughs> don't, don't worry about it, folks. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> You know what? He really was. He really was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's a good fighter. It, and uh, the thing about that is that, that um, Buster's dad trained him, and his dad was a fighter. Wow. Mm -hmm. And my dad trained me, who was a fighter. You know, and, and that was the dramatics in that in that fight. You know, yeah, both it, our dads trained us. Yeah. And you sparred together. Yeah, and, and yeah, before he, before we fought, we we did um, spar together. We sparred before. I knew I knew he was a good fighter. Even when he when he when he fought Tyson, I knew that, that they, were, they may see an upset. Now, when, fight. Did, did, were you ever? Because <clears throat> I get scared when I go places to speak, or or you know, scared TV. I'm just scared all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I live scared. But were, were, were you ever when you climbed in the ring and you looked over at the guy? I mean, you 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 had trained uh, constantly. Were you ever scared when you looked at him? No, no, no. I don't know. I don't know why. Uh, you know, I wasn't. You, you, you more, you more think about what you, what you need to do and, and what you look out for. You know. That's why, if you, like you did for yourself, mm -hmm. train every day. Yeah. I mean, rigorously. Yeah. That, that's when. Not, that's when you were scared when you didn't do that. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard. I've heard that when they, when they say they missed a day of training, yeah, that's when they walk in the ring scared, yeah. even though they had trained seven days. <laughs> you know, that one day sticks in their mind. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Now, did you enjoy boxing or you just enjoyed the money? I, 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 enjoyed, uh, I, I enjoyed the attention that I got from it. Okay. And what it, and what it done for me. And, 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 what it did for my dad, because I was a daddy's yeah. boy, you know. Yeah. And now you, you and your dad had a conflict, though, didn't you? It was, no, we, we didn't have a we didn't have a conflict. You know, he just he was in, in some things that that um, he had to deal with people that, that knew more than he did. Yeah. You know. And and he wasn't. Uh, some of those would take some money, more money than they should. Say say what? Say that again. I say some of those people your dad counted on 
took more money than they should have. Oh, yeah. They, they always do. And that's how boxers <clears throat> like Tyson and others end up where they make millions and they end up with a goose egg. Well, it's like this. You, it's like you, we train every day, you know, to be good fighters. There, there's people that train every day because, you know, money steals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's how they make money. their living, stealing yeah. money. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask Joanne yeah. a couple of questions here. <clears throat> I, I'm intrigued about the Publix thing. So, oh, okay. you know, you meet at Publix, uh, and then you're aggravated at them. Yes. And, uh, and, but yet here you set yes. friends, and you helped write the book. Yes. So how, how did that journey go from the Publix? We met at Publix, and um, I think Tony told me who he was, and he said, look me up. And so I looked him up online, and then we met again at Publix. I mean, we maybe talked in between. I can't remember all the details. And then he told me his story. I said, wow, you should write a book. Ah. And because uh, he had an amazing story. His life is an amazing story. Yeah. And um, we didn't talk for a long time after that. And then we talked again, and I wrote his book in eight weeks. Wow. My goodness. I wrote his book. I interviewed him and wrote his book and probably let, wrote it, published it, and everything in less than eight weeks because I wanted it ready for the uh, Hall of Fame. And uh, we, we would talk every day, and he told me his story. He had an amazing story. Well, you're a good writer. I yeah. am. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it, it's interesting that I love this statement in the book. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't even protect myself from myself. When you started on drugs, mm -hmm. cocaine, the downward spiral. Yes. Yeah. And I, I, I get a kick out of this. This one, <coughs> one time you're in the, you're in the hotel room. <laughs> you're all drugged up. Uh, and this is the quote from the book. The sound of sirens were blaring from the street below as helicopters whipped the air while hovering over the hotel. And there's an expletive. Uh, you know, I won't, I won't say what he's got in here anyway. Uh, <clears throat> I thought to myself, I'm busted. Let me lie here for a few minutes and see if they go away. In other words, no, they're coming to get me. I fumbled my way to the bathroom and flushed all of my drugs down the toilet, probably thousands of dollars a drug. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, wow. when they bust in the room to get me, there will be nothing incriminating here. So no evidence of drugs or anything. Everything, all of the drugs that I had bought for my private binge while holed up in this hotel in Los Angeles went down the toilet. And then he goes, he finds out they're not busting his door down, they're not coming. So he goes down and hears all these sirens and cop cars and everything. It was the Rodney King riots. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's thinking, they're coming after me. And then he's standing there going, oh, and then I, he used that word again, I'm sure. <laughs> I just flushed all of my drugs down the toilet. Yes. So you, this was the way you got high. I mean, before it was boxing, training mm -hmm. got you high, and now you go to this. What prompts that? Because my, my, good, my, my good friend, the guy that I watch all the time on MMA, John Jones, <laughs> the best of the best of the best of the best. He's about your height, maybe an inch taller. Unbelievable. Drugs. They had to take him out. He'll, he'll be out of fighting for a year till he dries out. Mm -hmm. He's lost tens of millions of dollars. Yeah. Uh, why? Well, well, for for me, when I when I started, it was the fight that I lost with Tyson. Because I, I, when I fought Tyson, I fought him with a broken right hand, and and the next day I seen Tyson on a Spike commercial. So that could be my commercial, you know, and and, and all and all the pain I feel from that. It was like more than a death, you wow. know, the, the, yeah. the, after I lost the fight. Yeah. So I was going, to, you know, you know, around just looking for anything to keep me. From, Making this this was a bad dream or something. Make it go away. Make it go away, and <clears throat> and that's when I got introduced to, you know, I was at one one of these Hollywood parties and I got introduced to it, and and it, and it took all that pain away. Wow. Mm. My that's goodness, what happened. You know? no. and, 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 and I and I knew it was it, it was it was just the devil's disguise yeah. and you know and the drugs. I I I told <clears throat> I told him before we came out here, I said I wish he could connect with John Jones. Because the, the similarities is amazing, yeah. except he has the opportunity not to 
not to blow everything he's got. He just, and, and he, across his chest, Philippians 4.13, mm -hmm. John Jones' chest, mm -hmm. uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You would think just before he started sniffing that cocaine, he'd look down and go, whoops, what does that say? I mean, yeah. it's amazing, but nothing stops you, does nothing. it? I mean, you, you're not even thinking of that. You're not, you're not even th thinking that. The, the funny thing is, is that during during that time that you're in that, you know that you're doing wrong, and you, and, and sometimes for, for me anyway, when I did, you know, my spirit, in my spirit, I was like, I know I'm doing some wrong. That's why I feel that that when I heard the sirens, that it was coming to get yeah, me. I mean, yeah. I wasn't like pushing keys out of the door. You know, I mean, nobody probably even heard me. I didn't make a sound. Yeah. You know, but. <laughs> Just that. The guilt. There yeah. it is, the yeah. guilt. Yeah. <clears throat> How many times have you been married? Married? Once. Once. Mm -hmm. Still married? No. Divorced. Did it? Did the drugs and all the fame and rock and roll destroy it? Well, it, it, it was part of it. Yeah. But then when my boxing career was over, that, that made it real easy for him to leave. Wow. With no, you know, none, none of the fun times, the okay. money, nothing like that. Was there. Your mom always prayed for you, right? <clears throat> always prayed for me. She was that, I, I mean, Joanne, you got to say this from the pulpit, I'm sure, many times. Yeah. Moms never stop praying they for your boy. Stop. And his mother, I met his mom, and his mother loves him with a agape love. She loved him through the whole process. And even in the, in the book, uh, how she was always there for him. Yeah. To, you know, no matter what, she loved him. In his lowest and darkest hours, her love was always there. You could have killed yourself. With yeah. drugs, that's yeah. what usually happens. Yeah, yeah. they just they, you know they get some bad drugs because they got to have it right now, and the guy sells them, you know, for five hundred dollars, some bad stuff. I mean, I mean, and it's 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 so funny, strange, you know, even talking here, you know, on on TV, national TV, talking about it, you know, it was it was for me with, with Joanne because she was a minister, I was able to to talk about it. And it freed my spirit. Wow. Yeah. It freed my spirit where I can talk Thank about you, it. Because Joanne. this You're is welcome. something that you never want to tell nobody. Yes. You know, you I smoke crack. Yeah. Know? I mean, who would you want to tell that to somebody? Yeah. You know? And here I am, free. My spirit is free. I can say, yeah, I was a crack smoker. For years. And and I, and I like even in the book how he tells, even in between major fights, he would stop to train and then go back to the drugs. Wow. And how devastating that was. How did you finally break the habit? Mm. I got on my knees and, and uh, uh, you know, I prayed and... and, and what did you say? I, I, I said, God, just, you know, just take this from me, you know, I mean, because it, it, it was a, 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 a combination of different things, you know, it was a friend that I had that, that also smoked drugs and I, they, we said we were going to quit. And, um, and, and I had brought her over after we, we said we was gonna quit. I had called her and I said, you know, come over. We got some, uh, you know, I got something I want to show you. And we started getting high. And I, when, when she, as soon as she took, she smoked it and hit it, I seen this fear come over her, you know. And it broke my heart, you know. I said, oh my God. I said, I, I, said, I said, this is my friend. I said, I told her I wasn't gonna never do this to her. We're gonna do this, yeah. you know. And so, and so, you know, right, right then, you know, I, I, just, I just dropped to my knees. I said, you know, I, I, only way I can, I can stop this is, is, is from her doing it. I have not, I have to stop doing it. Wow. And so when I got on my knees and, and I prayed, and I honestly meant that God help me stop this, you know, stop this yeah. craving. Well, He knows God. that you mean it. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of words are said. He knows when you mean yeah. it. Yeah. And, and and so I and then I was I was going to AA and you know the different places and stuff and I always felt convicted when I went there because I was working at this nightclub, and and they said you had to leave people places and things, you know. And, Were you a bouncer? Yeah, I was bouncing a club, so I couldn't. You know, I, I said I can't leave here. If I leave here, then I have to leave Florida. You know. Yeah. So so I, I stayed on, but I took one thing they said. They said no matter what, don't pick up, and I took that with me, and it, and weeks went by. Months went by, years went by to, to now to the day. I, I mean, I, don't I pick up. Don't pick up, no matter what. <clears throat> Boy, that's good. Yeah, yeah, you know, see, see, that's you. You've got to have boundaries. Yes. Yeah. If you know, I, I mean, I'm the kind of guy. My wife says <laughs> you've got one more thing that you put up, but I'm the kind of guy and personality in my life. If I didn't have boundaries, I would be a hellraiser. 
unbelievable. You got to have boundaries. Yes. Yeah. But but that whole thing it, it it left me though when I when I sat down and prayed with me because this thing used to come over to me like like doing after fights. You know, I mean I just had this fight or won the fight or whatever it was, you know, and it'd be like this cloud over me or, or boredom, you know, I just just bored, you know, and just had to do something, this thing, just call me out there, just, you know, go out there and get that and get this. That craving. That craving. And, wow. and I went out there, you know, you know, I just couldn't couldn't fight it. Wow. Joanne, <clears throat> that camera right there. Yes. Share Christ with somebody watching. Absolutely. If you're watching today and listening to Tony's testimony, we want you to know uh, no matter what you're going through, Jesus Christ is indeed the answer. It's really that simple. It's not complicated whatsoever. Jesus is indeed the answer to whatever your dilemma is. It may not be crack cocaine. It may be some other type of addiction or something else you're battling with in your mind or in your heart. But I want you to know today that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and certainly the answer to whatever you're struggling with in your life today. Tony and myself are witnesses to the power, the delivering power of a true, living, and loving God. And that's absolutely the only way and I would uh, admonish you today to just ask him into your heart, to accept Jesus into your heart. Pray with him right, right now. now. Father, in the name of Jesus, yeah. all the people who are watching this yeah. show today, Father God, I pray right now, Lord, that you touch their hearts, that their hearts are open to you, Lord, and that you begin to minister, to pour in your love, and that they have an understanding that you are the only answer to everything that they have need of, Lord God. And I just thank you, Father God, for open hearts, receptive hearts today, to those that are watching this broadcast, Father, yes, yes. and that you begin to minister to your love, your healing, your delivering power right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, and that your son be glorified as he's exalted on this show today and lifted up, Father. And we give you praise and honor and glory for it in the name of our Lord and our wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you make a decision today, as Tony says, and is this book, by the way, the, the website has been up so you can order it, right there it is, on your screen. Get the book, read it. It will challenge you. Yes. And it will give you the understanding that no matter what you're going through, no matter how low you think you are, yes. you have to reach up to touch bottom. You may be that far down. Mm. You know what? Jesus Christ is still the answer to every need you may have. Yes. Nothing is impossible with him. Mm. Are you kidding me? He made the universe. <laughs> I mean, he made you. Every cell in your body, every time you breathe, he knows it. He knows every detail, the Bible says, of your life. That's pretty significant. Mm -hmm. Let him control you. You're letting everything else control you. Give him control and watch what happens. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching It's Time. If you have recently made a decision for Christ, Herman and Sharon would like to hear from you.